Well, good morning. <laughs> I'll say that once again because only the front few people got it. Good morning. good morning. Now, doesn't that feel better? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Well, if it's okay with you, I think I'll put this down because this is going in and out. Let's see where we are. Here we go. All right. So if it's okay with you, I just want to continue with uh, sharing a little bit about what was taught at O&O Academy during my um, time there to visit. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Cliff. All right, you're my amen corner this morning. Thank you. <laughs> Apparent, thank you for not wanting me to suffer. <laughs> I'm only kidding, because I'm gonna do what I do, right? I can only, I can only give what Spirit gives me to, to, to share. But anyway, um, I wanted to share with that, and then I'll, I'll wrap this up, because next week we're moving into, a, into a Holy Week, and so we need to, uh, we want to be present to that experience and that energy, that transforming energy that is there through whatever it's Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, of course, Easter Sunday morning. So um, I'll wrap this up. But anyway, the course that I just completed uh, this time was called um, Self Knower Level One. And it was preceded by the concepts and courses of Truth Knower, Life Knower, and then Self Knower is the third one in this, it's five parts to this uh, process in this program. And Self Knower, and so the next course that I take will be Self Knower Level Two. And then that will be followed by Cosmic Knower. Cosmic Noah levels one and two, and that's where they're going to take us into uh, the higher, higher conscious, states of higher consciousness. Once you get to know what's happening in your inner world, then we have the ability to expand and go into higher consciousness. So we'll be doing Cosmic Noah level one and two, and then after Cosmic Noah, it's called, uh, they call it a philosopher teacher. So I began to think, hmm, first we know then we teach, right? And we know not from the knowing here in the head, but we're beginning to know from what? Experience, because what, they, what we're all encouraged to do is to, we have practices and, you know, if I'm gonna be a self-knower, I must practice. What does that mean to be a self-knower? If I'm a truth knower, I must practice. What does that mean? So it's not about, they're not into, into this whole uh, intellectual stuff. So it's, it's, it's not about um, knowing intellectual knowledge, although we will get, we get some of that, of course. It's not about um, historical knowledge. We're not knowing that, although we get some of that as well, you know, through some of their, their ancient techniques and they share, and so we are learning some historical things, but it's not all about that. The knowing isn't about that. The knowing, of course, is in relationship to self. Everything that we're learning and doing is about relationship to self. What do you know? What do I know? What, what is taking place? So it's, it's, it's learning about knowing and being very truthful to what is taking place within me. That's what they want to know. Are you aware of what is taking place in you, within you, right? Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Now we talk a lot about truth principles. Yes, we are to know truth principles and the truth principles can certainly work when we apply them and set us free. But the ultimate set of freedom is really knowing yourself from within. Not just the truth principles. Because sometimes we'll say truth principles and we have to know them over and over and over and over and over again. Why? Because we really didn't know something about self. We've known, we've known an external thing, but not the internal thing. So, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And here's the thing. Once you begin to know, to know the truth at its deepest level, right, then all of a sudden you are able to then move into a state of transcendence. When you know the truth, this is from truth to transcendence. When you know the truth, then you are able to transcend beyond your limited sense of self, to transcend beyond your circumstances and your conditions, 
to transcend beyond your challenges and your problems and the suffering, all to transcend all of that. So this whole thing, to know the truth is what enables you to transcend, right? At a deeper level. Now the main thing that we're gonna know, that you wanna know about yourself at any given moment is the quality of your inner state. Because your actions will come from your inner state and your actions will then impact your experience and your experience thus impacts your life. So we get the, the progression, right? The inner quality, the state of our inner being influences our actions because our actions will come out of the state. If I'm coming out of an angry state, my chances are my actions are going to be from that state of consciousness, right? And then those actions will influence my choices I make and that will impact the experiences I have and then my life is all over here. So we wanna look about the, we wanna, let's look at uh, action, okay? Because right action, we call it right, they call it right action. But before we get into um, the actions that come from the inner state of our being or what they call right action, I wanna take, the time to make sure that we are clear on what one's inner state is all about. Because that's where we live. Where do you live? In here, right? Where do you experience your life? In here. We think out here is the experience, but it really is according to our inner state. And so basically your inner state is all about how you interact. It's about your, the state from which you interact. It is uh, about your emotional or energetic vibes, right, that come from you, from which you will then take action. It's the vibration, the emotional state, the emotional consciousness, the psychological state from which you then take action and make your choices. Or it's about the quality of your thoughts, your feelings, your perceptions. In a nutshell, it is your inner world, your consciousness. And we all know that. So your inner state is the reflection of your consciousness, right? Now remember this, they have a perception that we only live in two states. So we're gonna base our premise on that. Other people may have other ideas and that's great, but for right now we're gonna take the two states. So they say that we are, e we are living in either or, two states. Either we're living in a state that is a beautiful state where we feel connected, where we feel a sense of harmony, where we feel peace, where we feel joy, where we're open to wisdom, where we can feel each other, where there's an appreciation for life, our senses are heightened. I've been coming back and man, I watch the sunsets and the color is just freaking me out because it's just so beautiful. In the mornings, the color, nature has some powerful colors. And so I'm really like, you know, I'm not in the 60s when you used to go like, oh man, this is really... But that's how I feel like I'm doing. I'm sitting in my room in my, because I have glass windows all in my uh, bed, you know, in my bedroom. There's a, um, my sunroom and my sacred space is all glass and it, and it faces a forest of trees. And so, every, you know, sunset or whatever, I'm like, oh man, it's beautiful because my senses are heightened, right? I, I am connecting on a different level, all right? So, so your, your internal state is the emotional, energetic vibes in which you are interacting and experiencing life. So you're either in a beautiful state of harmony, connection, feeling of wholeness, health, whatever, all that, or you are in a suffering state, which is a state of what? Disconnection, inner conflict, turmoil, questioning, confusion, doubt, all that is the suffering state. We're either in one or the other. Now, sometimes life, or more often than not, life gives us problems and challenges. And you would think that we might suffer as a result of these problems and challenges. Right? Because that's the normal way in which we think. I got some challenges, I got some problems, and boy, I'm suffering because of that. And they would say, mm 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 mm. Because there is a distinct difference between your problems, challenges, and your state of suffering. We talked about that. 
And because suffering and problems and challenges are two different things, there are two different ways in which we approach solving them or we approach addressing our problems and our challenges and our state of suffering. Two different ways of dealing with that because problems and challenges are basically outer oriented. They are external, they come from an external source, right? Your child doesn't do its homework or whatever, and there's, a, there's a problem. Or maybe you didn't meet a deadline at work and you have a problem. It's some kind of external activity. Maybe there's inharmony at your job and people, you know, are not getting along or whatever, but that's still an external, outer-oriented event. But suffering is different because it is internal. Suffering is an emotional state that we are feeling. So if, let's say, my child uh, doesn't get selected to the varsity basketball team, that might be a problem. But then when I get emotionally upset and angered about it and go up to the coach and I'm like, ah, that's now suffering on my part, right? Because I have what? It's an, eternal, an internal emotional state or expression. So suffering is internal and problems are external. And that's fine because how we're going to heal them and deal with them are in two different ways. But when we mix the two, it gets a little confusing. So what happens is problems and challenges require some type of right action on our part to fix or address the problem or the channel challenge, right? But, oh, but, but suffering requires observation and awareness. So problems require to set them right or see or fix, take some type of right action. We gotta, we do something in the outer. Let's get a new measurement form or whatever it is, we do something. But the internal suffering requires observation and awareness for how we're going to fix or address the suffering. It requires, suffering requires a, a, a level of truth, of internal truth in order to transcend the suffering. Remember I said truth helps us to do what? Transcend our suffering. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So, you know, problems and challenges are bad enough in and of themselves, but then when we add suffering on top of it, it just complicates stuff, right? Because you might be able to solve the problem if you didn't interject all this emotional suffering around the problem. So we, we get cut off to our solutions because now we off on a whole nother tangent of emotional upset, which just simply cuts off our ability to receive clear direction for right action, for right solution about what I might need to do about this problem or this challenge. And so we want to look at, okay, well, what is it then that will keep me? What other things? We know that suffering is a part of the problem of, of not being able to get to right action, but what else could be a part of the problem, barring suffering, of what keeps us from utilizing right actions to solve our problems? What gets in the way of our ability to use or to access right action? And there are two major things. One is the, 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 the challenge of inaction. And inaction happens because we might not know exactly what to do about a particular problem or a situation or a circumstance. We might not have the answer and because we don't know what to do, we end up doing what? Nothing. We postpone taking action. We postpone it because we also might be afraid of the consequences of making what? A wrong decision, a wrong choice. So we think, well, you know what? Let me not make any kind of decision and any kind of choice, even though not making a choice is a what? It's a choice. And it just compounds even further sometimes you're making a choice. And I was just saying, you know, Sometimes life just gives us hard choices. But we must make them anyway because to not make it complicates it even further. 
And one of the gifts that we have is the gift of choice, conscious choice. Even if it's challenging, that is a gift that we have to shape and move our lives in a particular direction, in the direction that we want it to go in. And so what if you make a mistake? So what if it is a decision that maybe you could have done differently? If that's the case, you have to then what? Make a new one. But to not make a decision in action stands in the way of right action. Now the other thing that stamps us from, stops us from taking right action is our reaction. One is inaction and the other is reaction. Because we have a tendency to become reactionary, right? We, we have a tendency to react from our, again, emotional state. Maybe I'm going to react. I can't really make a, a decision or take right action because I'm hung up in my emotional state of anger, hurt, frustration, disappointment, shame, blame, whatever it is. And that is in the way of me then making or taking right action because I'm in my reaction, right? And we know that, that, that that's limited. Or if we're not reacting, maybe we uh, are complaining. We're in a complaining frame of mind, so we're not moving towards solving the situation again. We're just in the mode of complaining about it or blaming or rationalizing or whatever, reacting, right? Instead of opening up to what can I do about this? What right action can I take? So sometimes people just have to get it out. You know, when I'm counseling folks, I give you but so much time to get it out. Because <laughs> we're not going to go around the Mowbray Bush and what he said. And, okay, I got that. Now, what is the course of action that we want to take? Because sometimes people just want to get in the loop of telling, you know what I mean? Telling their story. Reiterating their suffering because we think we get a badge for it or something. The more I can suffer, you know. All right, what are we going to do about it? And we all suffer. I do this to myself. I take myself through my suffering. But now I'm getting better at, you know what? You made a mistake. It wasn't something that you needed to do. It wasn't intentional on your part. Forgive yourself. Now, how can you make it better? How can you connect? What can you do to connect to this situation in a higher way through loving and allowing and being joyous in the process? What can I do? Because if I, me spitting my tail about it and beating myself up is not going to bring me any closer to a solution. So we have inaction and then we have reaction. So you want to ask yourself from time to time, am I reacting or am I taking right action? Am I being inactive or am I taking right action? So what is this whole concept of right action? So we should get a little closer to that. What is right, right action? And I love their definition. They say it is action that emerges after you have dissolved all emotional drama and have arrived at truth. Now I'm going to say that one again. What is right action? It is action that emerges after you have dissolved all emotional drama and then have arrived at truth. Isn't that powerful? I love that because, see, when you have a whole bunch of stuff going on in your head, running around in your head, when your emotional state is out of whack or when, when you're in a reactionary state, you cannot take right action. You, you, your, your judgments are skewed, right? Everything is tainted by your fear or your doubt or whatever's going on. The truth becomes clouded. The truth is blocked because you are having all this emotional drama. So right action can only come forth when you have dissolved that. And when you have dissolved that, what remains is truth. And from that place of truth, then you can take action. It's, it's, it's really so powerful because clarity of heart and mind lead to higher judgments. It leads to discernment. You see, we're always being given the answers. People say, what should I do? You know what to do. Your soul knows what to do. 
But because you also have confusion in the soul and conflict and all this other stuff, you're blocking out whatever intuition spirit is trying to present to you or whatever right action that would arise naturally as a place when there is clarity without all this emotional stuff and baggage. So, so the matter is, is we've got to look at, you know, where are we on the spectrum and how are we going to solve these outer challenges and problems and how are we going to uh, oh, let this truth that we know to transcend the issue, to transcend the circumstance. And it's not necessarily the truth about the stuff, it's the truth about me, how I'm handling the stuff. Are we clear on that? Yeah. So they say that there are three kinds of people. There are people who are aware of their problems and challenges, but they have absolutely no clue about what's going on inside of them. They, they know that they've got, they're clear on their problems and challenges, they're very much aware of that, but they are totally unaware of their inner state of being. They have no idea what's going on and all they can see is the world of effect. They know what has shown up. They can see that there's something out here that is amiss. But because they're not in tune to their part of creation in what has manifested, they begin to then try to manage the world of effects. They try to manage what's happening out here, right? They get busy managing manifestations. How, how many of you got caught up in managing your life? Trying to manage it, right? Trying to keep all the, everything, and yet stuff is happening. But if you're not aware of what's taking place and your part in contributing, you're going to constantly have to be ma uh, managing life. And so we remain unconscious. The second kind of person is a little bit more conscious. So they know that they have uh, some problems and some issues that they're working on, but because they don't know how to free themselves from their suffering, they just remain in it. They know that stuff is not right, but they don't know how to get themselves out of it. They don't know what path they should take, how to free themselves from that. So what happens is then all of a sudden, you know, again, they are stuck because they know they've got a problem, but they can't figure out how do I get out of this problem? How do I get out of my anger? How do I get out of my sadness? What do I do about my depression? I know I'm depressed. I know I'm disappointed. I know I have these feelings, but how can I be free? So you should know the truth, and the truth sets you free, but there's a little bit more to the knowing of the truth. And so they, what they do is they begin to just simply try to manage their suffering. The first people are managing the effects, right? Trying to juggle everything out here. The second people are trying to manage their suffering, their internal world. And how they, because they don't know how to get out of it, how they manage it could be by masking it. It could be by um, doing some drugs and alcohol to try to suppress self-medicating. Or maybe we'll overeat. Maybe that, you know, I have suffering, I don't know what to do, so therefore all these things I'm doing to, to somehow bring pleasure to my inner state, which is not really helping, but I think that I am managing my suffering, right? Maybe I'm a workaholic. Maybe I'm a shopaholic. Maybe I move from relationship to relationship. Maybe I do all of these other things because I'm not aware of how to get out of my state. And then the third type of people, they just begin to rationalize their suffering. They make it okay to be in the state. It's okay. Look, if you knew what I was going through, okay, you'd be suffering too. It's just the way that I am. Yes, I'm depressed, but I have no other choice because look, this is what happened. And so we ra they rationalize their staying in their suffering. Right? So some people are going to manage the effects, others are better and they try to manage their suffering, and others just rationalize, it's okay, I'm stressed. I have a right to be stressed. Because society tells us we have a right to be stressed, right? And so we remain there. But we are conscious beings, and so it's not normal to be in a state of suffering. It's not normal to be constantly in a state of confusion, or not normal to be in a state where you're just suffering, you're unhappy, you have no harmony in your relationship. That is not a, a, a normal state. You want to be liberated. 
Do you not want to be liberated? From, everybody wants to live in a state of liberation and freedom, right, and wholeness, inner joy. We want those things. So if you are suffering, it is not because of your circumstances and your conditions, but because of how you are thinking about your circumstances and your conditions. It's very easy to think it's the conditions and the circumstances that are causing my suffering. Not so. So, see what you are thinking. Observe yourself. Observe your thoughts and your feelings. Observe your internal state as often as possible. See your self-obsession that we talked about. See your stinking thinking. See all of these things, how it's about your mental, emotional, and spiritual state of which, guess what? You can change. You can do something about it. You can change it. Change the way you see things and the things you see will what? Change. So dissolving all emotional drama is very key. And to do that, it's very simple. It's not difficult at all. You have to begin with the practice of observing your inner state. Most of the time, we don't do that, but observe it. And better still, see if you can observe it while you're in the midst of it. Like, well, you know what? I'm just, I'm, I'm off. You know, like, I can't sometimes do it in the midst of it, but, but right after, when I'm driving and I'm like, oh, oh, like, and I'm like, come, man, come on, get, I'm like, oh, oh, what? <laughs> I just saw it, right? It's better if I can see it before I actually have the action, but that's okay. I'm catching myself now earlier and earlier so that my whole trip in isn't ruined and I'm like, ah, get out of the way. And, you know, my mother, I'm like, where are these people going? Don't they know I'm going to church? If you ain't coming to church with me, you need to be out of my way. <laughs> so, you know, observe what is happening in you. See your emotional drama. And this is the thing, if you don't, it has a way of taking you over, right? It has a way of and moving you into a state of unconsciousness so that after a while, you don't know why stuff is happening because you're not present to it. Eckhart Tolle calls this the pain body. I don't know if you remember his book on the presence of, uh, the, uh, the presence of now, the power of now. But it talks about the pain body, and it's, you know, when the pain body just takes over, it causes us to act like a fool. We just do stuff, you know what I mean? We, we're what? We're acting out. We're reacting. Somebody does something and we're triggered in a heartbeat. Bam, I'm triggered. Woo, woo. All that is unconscious. It's the pain body. It's the unconscious taking over my, my life and causing me to act in ways that I don't choose to act. Because every time I do that, I'm like, that's not the way I want to be. Because usually when you find yourself doing those things, don't you feel bad after? You say, doggone it, I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to do that. I don't want to re relate to this person in this way. We feel bad because we know that that's not how the soul wants to be. It's not our natural state to be in anger. and, and, and It is our natural state to be in harmonious relationship with life itself. That's our natural state, to, to understand the goodness of life and to be able to see the goodness of, in others, even if I disagree, even if we are on opposite uh, sides of the spectrum. There's that foundation of our connection, our humanity, our spirituality that enables us to be together even in our differences. That's natural. And so we have to observe it when we're not. Ask yourself, what am I feeling now? What's my emotional state that I'm experiencing? Am I at peace? Am I triggered? Am I distant? Am I separating myself? Am I close? Am I forgiving? Am I loving? What's the state that is taking place? What's the quality of your thoughts? Am I in the past? Am I in my reactive mode? Or am I in my repetitive mode where I keep thinking the same thing over and over again? Or am I in my rehearsing conversation mode? 
well, I'm going to say this, and they, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to say that, and, you know, we're rehearsing and getting all ready for it. Right? What is taking place? Because that is going to influence your experience, your actions, your choices, your connections, your relationships. The more conscious awareness you can have, the greater chance you will have to address change and to heal whatever it is that is standing in the way of you living in a beautiful state, standing in the way of your making conscious choices and taking conscious actions and letting you live from where, the, where you want to live. This is why Jesus said, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You gotta know the truth, your truth. Before you can know the truth, you need to know your truth. Sometimes we rush to the truth. I'm a rush to the truth principles, and you don't have your truth together. Which is why when you try to apply the truth, it don't work for you. Because you're not aware of your truth. Right? So you affirm and you pray, but inside you churn. Right? and you're having all this stuff, but you're praying and you're asking, but meanwhile, there's all this commotion here. So your prayers go unanswered because the universe is like, well, you're asking this, but you're feeling this, and the universe is gonna go by your vibration. Your feelings, your internal state will always tell you what's really true, what's really going on, not what you say. How are you, beloved? Oh, P.I. So good. You can tell me that, but the universe knows what's really going on. So we might as well be truthful. Learn to practice that truth within ourselves because, see, truth is good. Truth is light. Truth means wisdom, uh, in, uh, <clears throat> illumination, insights, all that helps. Don't be ashamed to look at your stuff. It gives you its light, and light is what dissolves what? The darkness. Light will dissolve what is going on so that what emerges is then truth. So you bring light into your awareness. You bring light into those hidden aspects. You bring the light of truth to whatever it is that you're doing. And the good news is this. When you are bringing the light of truth to whatever's happening within you or what you are doing, you don't have to attack it. You don't have to analyze it. You don't have to uh, even try to change it. You just have to start being aware of it. This is the good news and the beauty. Because the consistency of your awareness, the consistency of your light, awareness is light, the consistency of your light will dissolve the emotional drama and trauma so that what emerges, you arrive at truth. And the truth will set you free. So and I'm going to encourage you to, once you're in this state of seeing your truth, then you can apply the truth or spiritual principles or do your, you know, your prayer work or whatever it is. Because then it has a chance to really uh, move forth from a higher state of consciousness. And then I'm just going to suggest that, that you get a spiritual vision for your life. Did we talk about that before? See, a spiritual vision, they had each of us talk about uh, all this work becomes easy when you have a spiritual vision for your life. Now, a spiritual vision is not about what you intend to do in the world. That's, that's a mission statement. What they say a spiritual vision is, is how do you intend to be in the world? And when you have that foundation, you can then recognize when your choices and actions are out of alignment with what you say your spiritual vision is. So mine is joyously connection, connecting through what? Love and allowing. So whenever I get to see that mm, that wasn't no joyous connection, I wasn't connecting, what I'm doing is not connecting, it's actually disconnecting me from people. Oh, all right, I'm out of alignment with my vision for how I want to be. Oh, that's not really allowing others to be who they want, who are they, uh, 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 I'm out of alignment. And you know what? Something about this seems very simple, but it is so powerful because it's working for me. I'm starting to see and recognize when I am not in alignment with my spiritual vision. The moment I, wow, is that, was that statement really bringing harmony? No, 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 it wasn't. 
And I don't have to beat myself. I'm going to miss the boat on occasion. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to inadvertently hurt you or hurt your feelings. It's not my intention, but this is humanity. This is the human condition, right? But if I can say, hmm, that's not what I wanted to express, let me bless that situation. Let me soften my, my approach. Let me be open to making a joyous connection. Yeah, I could be right, but is it more important for me to be right, or do I want to make a connection? So I want to bring this person, this situation, into the state of harmony and wholeness and oneness. So I'm not living outside of that, because living outside of oneness is, is strife. I can change, but they said the best place to change any place is from what? Within. Not without. Let me go within first. And when I get myself in alignment with truth, then I can transform the world. So get yourself a spiritual vision. Don't have to be long. Don't make it flat, but make it meaning for you, meaningful for you. When I say, mm-mm, Sylvia, love and allow. And when you say live in love, it's a trigger. Yeah, you know what? Let me back. I want to love and allow. I don't need to be right. Bless you. And we say, I bless you and I release you to your good. I want to be, and not from a negative, I want to, no, let me bless you. Let me bring you in. So this is the work that we are here to do. And as we think about transforming the world, the first world you want to transform is your own inner world. And when you transform your inner world, then the outer world will be impacted by your presence and the power of your enlightened self. Because when you begin to know the truth and you are the know the self, you become enlightened. And when you are enlightened, you can transform, you transform your world. So let's make the commitment to move from truth to transcendence. Blessings and namaste. <laughs> blessings, blessings. Blessings, thank you.